don't like the grass cut so low and you can't even mow it. <laughs> I, I can't. Uh, I don't know how many times I've heard that within the past two days, but uh, oh, man. Uh, a lot of other people have to It's Phil and Ryan back on Listen Up. We're talking about grass. How about on a baseball field, Ryan? Uh, shout out to Fenway Park and Ryan Boston. Uh, actually just got home from there a couple of days ago, a Sunday night. And you're headed off to Deep Creek, but what a time. I told you, um, you know, Boston Red Sox fans, they're, they're something else. You know, they're rivals, but uh, they were very, very nice. I uh, had my orange and black on all game long. Uh, but, yeah, they, they were very uh, welcoming, and they – man do they love that song sweet caroline and during the seventh and eighth inning oh man i mean i should have recorded a video for you it was unbelievable uh how they sing that out loud uh, but yeah so anyway oldest ballpark in baseball ryan and i can finally cross that one off the list yeah i'm sure that was definitely fun and it definitely looks like a, a good baseball field definitely well from watching on tv but i'm sure every baseball stadium you go to there's always a different experience and that's with uh, i'm sure every single sport every single city you go to i'm sure there's a different experience so it's definitely exciting when you get to visit all the different stadiums and whatnot and that's why we're hoping uh we can get down to the, the maryland uh game when, when uconn comes to town and see them play and hopefully eventually get up to uconn as well well, I did think about you, and I texted you, and you can tell everybody I was so hyped. Uh, I did cross through Connecticut uh, when I was headed up to Boston. Uh, we did drive. So, I mean, that, that was exciting um, in and of itself because I had I, I got my phone out of my pocket right away. I was like, man, I had to text Ryan. I said, Ryan, we're headed through Connecticut right now. I even saw signs for the University of Connecticut. It was all I could do not to stop by and take some pictures. Um, but we kept driving up the interstate. But, uh, yeah, Ryan, uh, maybe one of these days we can actually head up north and stop in Yukon. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to, especially I think two years from now, uh, Maryland should be going to Yukon. So that would definitely oh, be uh, a, boy. Fun, a fun game to go to. So, uh, yeah, right, we'll, we'll today, definitely have to make our way up there at some point. That's right. Today, Ryan, I just want to uh, shout out to you. It's, it's – uh, great to be back on with you in uh, about a week and the last one we'll go over the comments uh sophomore caroline ducharme the last video in just a second but i want to go over with you ryan uh today is az fud day and we only had two more what two more videos to finish up this series we had two more az and then after this dorky you has and and that's all for this series and that's it. So Iva did an incredible job. She came up with a great idea, and this is it. This is really it. You know, AZ Fudd, I can't wait to uh, discuss her today with you. Uh, we'll get right on down into it. This is a player, Ryan, that came out of high school that was very talented, uh, just like uh, Paige Beckers, um, and so many others that attend UConn and so many other uh, um, schools, right? Um, with that said, uh, AZ Fudd, in some people's eyes, she has lived up to expectations so far. Other people's eyes, she has not. Um, I'm a huge fan of AZ Fudd, as you know. And like you stated to me earlier last week, Phil, with the Paige Becker's injury, you're going to have a lot more players now that has weight on their shoulders. They're going to have to take right. over this team. You know, if they want to, at the very least, you know, it's normal for you, Con, to say it, at the very least, get back to the championship game. So I think, Ryan, AZ Fudd, um, again, she has a lot of potential. Uh, she did have a great 21-22 season uh, when she broke out, especially, you know, I love that game against Tennessee. When you were stuck at work and you couldn't watch. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I really loved that game. That um, I think that opened up a lot of people's eyes uh, that did not watch her in high school and – uh, the year before when she came in, because she is a, is she going into her junior year? Sophomore year. All right, sophomore year. Okay, so that was her freshman year. Um, yeah, so I mean, uh, Ryan, when you talk about AZ FUD, though, there has been a lot of hot debates uh, on this podcast when we bring up the name AZ FUD. Um, what do you think uh, goes along with them hot topics? Because obviously, again, some people are not, 
pleased with what they have seen so far. I think, again, only her sophomore season, I think you have to take a step back and really give her time to progress. Um, I think the best is yet to come. And again, I like to compare it to these ESPN pages. Um, I strongly believe now with Paige Becker's going all season, um, maybe, hey, now, now I understand just a sophomore, but what if you start to get them notifications every morning on your phone with a picture of Dorka Uhas and AZ Fudd side by side? Yeah, and I'm thinking even more of AZ Fudd and Caroline Ducharme side by side Ooh. because uh, <laughs> you know, last year, obviously, they came – to UConn, same class, both entering their sophomore year. Talked about Caroline Ducharme in the last episode, but AZ Fudd, I think she's going to have a similar year uh, compared to Caroline Ducharme in the sense that they're both going to have to step up since Paige Beckers is going to be out. Uh, welcoming in Lou Lopez into you know UConn territory, getting her used to the system. Even though AZ Fudd is just a sophomore, I think she she will definitely help Lou Lopez and of course Nika Mule will, will help Lou Lopez kind of get used to the system. But AZ Fudd, I, I think last year, I, just as a freshman, and I said this the same uh, about Caroline Ducharme. I think AZ Fudd had a tremendous uh, freshman year, even though there there was a lot of hype expectations around AZ Fudd because she was so high in the rankings coming out of high school. We expect so much from these players, even though they are just coming fresh out of high school, coming to UConn. There's so many expectations from uh, the players, the coaches, the fans. So uh, it, it's it's not easy coming to a school like UConn, but I think AZ Fudd had a tremendous year last season for UConn, stepping in for Paige Becker, stepping in for uh, all, all sorts of injuries that UConn had, having to fight through all the troubles of last season, uh, you know, coming off the bench and starting some games. I definitely think just like Caroline Ducharme, AZ Fudd will get more starts. She'll get more playing time. Definitely expect her to see her in every single game this season, of course, bearing any injuries or anything of that sort that, that happened last season. But, yeah, I mean, I, I just think AZ Fudd is just a unique talent. She's one of a kind, just like Paige Beckers and Caroline Ducharme. The way AZ Fudd is able to create space, create a lane for herself, create her own shot, she has such a unique stroke at the line and, and shooting the ball as well. She can shoot the three very well. Very good mid-range game, driving the basket. Would like to see her get a little more aggressive. I think that's the one thing that maybe I would like to see out of her this season, getting more aggressive. And that goes for a lot of the UConn players as well. Um, and I think I think defense is going to be something that uh, Caroline Ducharme and AZ Fudd are, are going to work on together. But I think AZ Fudd and, and Caroline Ducharme this season as a duo and individual players are, are really just going to pop off for UConn and they're going to they're going to light the uh, the college scene on fire this season. I believe so. AZ Fudd is going to look like more or less like your junior senior type player. I really yeah. think that's going to happen. Um, and you said it very well. Again, let's remind everyone that doesn't know, although I think a lot of people are familiar with the name AZ Fudd by now, um, especially if they're big on women's basketball, right? Uh, big women's basketball fans. Uh, St. John's College High School, Ryan. And then, of course, she was not too far away from us. Uh, this is the player that her hometown is Arlington, Virginia. So it's not too far away. Um, and when you talk about just a sophomore in this, <clears throat> in this rotation, um, you see where she appeared in 25 games with 17 starts. She was third on the team with 12 points per game. Um, and it have, she scored in double digits in 15 games. Yeah. Okay. So Ryan, I think she already took a big step forward from everything she accomplished in high school to her freshman year at UConn. I just want to, you know, for the people that has criticized her, just take a step back and look again. She dealt, she even dealt with injury. Am I wrong? Yeah, she did. Yeah. So I think it's a big step forward just to see her progress in college. And mind you, you talked about it. It's hard coming into UConn very first year, right? So expectations so high for whatever player you are, whatever position, whatever school, high school you attended. Um, I think she did a very, very good job uh, with the weight on her shoulders. 
uh, and what she had to carry and what they went through uh, during her freshman year. Yeah, for sure. And for I think AZ as well, just for her to kind of just come in and fit the UConn system so well. She did everything Coach Gino asked of her, played so well with, with the time she did, uh, was able to play with Paige Beckers and Caroline Ducharme as well. Uh, and, and for her and Caroline to just kind of come in together at the same time, learn together, uh, and just for them to blossom and, and to watch them last season was uh, really fun to, to just watch every game that they played. Uh, and I, I, I can't wait for this upcoming season to see them both on the court and hopefully both starting together a good amount of games. It's going to be really fun to watch both of them on the court, passing the ball, shooting the ball, and, and hopefully playing uh, just as good as defense as we, we know they can play in this uh, UConn system. But it's definitely going to be really exciting despite the page beggars injury, hopefully we can put that aside. Hopefully she gets better and sh she can recover, come back better than ever last season, but really excited for AZ FUD and Caroline Ducharme to keep just going up and up, keep learning under Gino, keep getting better each and every day. It's going to be fun this season. Let me ask you this before we move on to comments. There was an article that came out early, early last week and it was titled, um, UConn Women's Basketball Weekly, um, shout out to Daniel Connolly for writing this article. Um, this is AZ Fudd's team now. With Paige Beckers out for the year, AZ Fudd needs to step up as the Huskies star. Now, you can go two different roads here, Ryan, and I want to see what you have to say. Are you saying this is AZ Fudd's team now because without her at all, the Huskies had no chance or are you saying this because AZ Fudd was looked at obviously the number one, what recruit in her yeah. class coming out of high school. Are you saying that because of the weight a number one player carries on their shoulders? So you can go either way here again. You have to remember she has two years left at UConn after well, three years counting this season that hasn't right. even started yet. So, I mean, it's kind of um, – it's an interesting topic to get into, uh, not to get in heavily today, but just to hear your thoughts on that. I mean, which way would you lean? Because you can lean – is it because of all the weight that she carries? Is, is it because of what the UConn Huskies fans expected coming out of high school of her? Or are you, do you, are you really seeing her saying the players around her cannot carry this team without AZ stepping up and leading – like we have seen Paige Beckers do so many times. Because you have uh, Caroline Ducharme, you have Dorka Juhas, you have so many other players on this team that could step up. Are, are, am I reading this right? Am I reading this correctly, Ryan, that AZ Foot is the only player that has that big-time ability to step up? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely wouldn't say that it's AZ Fudge show and they okay. UConn can't uh, succeed without her. But I think it, it's probably just because AZ Fudd, one, was the top recruit coming out of high school and the expectations, and mostly because she's a point guard. But I think yeah. if there's going to be one player to to step up and lead the team, and in my opinion, there, there really doesn't have to be anybody that per se leads the team or is the captain, kind of like we, we perceive that Paige Beckers is the star of the show and that the leader of the team, I, I really don't think for the, for this season, uh, there really has to be a, a leader of the team. I think everybody is going to have to chip in without page Beckers and, and everybody is going to have to do their job, come in and play a very solid basketball game. Uh, everybody's going to have to be with their teammates communicating on the court. I think it's going to be an all around team effort for this season. But I think if, if one player would have to step up and lead the team this year, I think it would have to be Dorka Juhas. It, it is only her second year at UConn because her last year she transferred from Ohio State. She had a very good year transferring into UConn. Uh, and, of course, the unfortunate injury. And I know uh, she has a lot, lot to say about that. She was very disappointed she didn't get to play 
uh, to finish the, the March Madness and play in that championship game. I, I know she was very disappointed. She had to watch her teammates from the bench. So uh, I know she's going to be very fired up to to be able to get back to March Madness, get get back to that championship game. And Dorka Yuha is, really has all the tools, I think, to really become a star uh, at UConn and be able to uh, actually play for, for player of the year, in my opinion. I, I think she she is really oh. that good uh, of, a, of a post player. I think she has all the tools. She can shoot the three, which uh, I like a lot out of a post player. But, uh, yeah, Dorka Yuha is, is definitely a, a real talent, and I, I think I'd go with her as a player that – uh, would per se step up and lead the team for this season. Yeah, and I want to remind people, Ryan, uh, they I know it's about team, 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 and team, uh, but people have the ability, uh, they, they tend to forget about people's personal thoughts, you know, people's personal, uh, quote-unquote, issues when it comes to sports you know, discussing the topic of sports issues. You just said it, Dorka, facing that major injury. There's a side of you that burns up, you know, that wants to get back out there, that wants to prove people wrong. And that gets into our next comment because what you just said, it looks like this person may disagree what you have said. Let's go to these comments, Ryan. BBWNG54 says Dorka as the face of UConn. People overrate her. She can provide good offense, but she is not a strong, tough rebounder, unlike Aaliyah Edwards, especially against other bigs. She doesn't handle passes well. She is not a game changer. She was overall bad during March Madness. She was rushing her shots and missing layups to the point that Gino took her out of the game. AZ and or Caroline will be the face of UConn. Well, Ryan, again, let's remind people this is a new season. Yeah, and I think Dork Yuha is always she's, she's going to be the face. It's just going to be this year because this is her last year. Uh, but I, I think definitely Dorka had a good season, but she can definitely improve. And I think those missed layups, rush shots, I think that can go for just about everybody on UConn oh. last year. Uh, and it's definitely not just Dorka because I remember Aaliyah, uh, AZ, I mean, ju just about everybody on the team last mm. year uh, missing Good easy point. shots. Yeah, uh, and, and I I would agree with Dorka not playing the best during March Madness. Of course, she did go down with the injury, uh, but before her injury, I would agree that she could have played uh, definitely a lot better than what she was. But I think that's that just goes to the fuel the fire even more under her and get her motivated coming into this season to play better. Uh, she did struggle a little bit uh, when her first couple games at UConn. So I just think all of that kind of combined is really going to light her up this season and, and motivate her to be an even better player uh, for her, her last last year at UConn and last year as a, as a college basketball player. How about Iva? I was already getting into new ideas, and, and we love it. Uh, Caroline surprised a lot uh, of people. Caroline surprised a lot of people during her freshman year. Maybe she won't be ready at the start of the season, but for March, she will be more than ready. Guys, when is starting lineup episode? With everything happened, we need new discussion. Well, let's get through this one first, Iva. Only one video left, Ryan says. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm thinking maybe the beginning of September, we could probably hop on that. I know we discussed that, uh, and we also discussed doing the, the whole schedule, going over the times, yeah. the dates. Well, uh, and tell also ESPN, Ryan, to finally <laughs> update the schedule. I mean, every time I pull it up on the app, uh, they have the score of the final game last season. I, I know UConn fans, they don't want to see that. Yeah, it, it doesn't make any sense because I, most of the games I thought have been announced. So you would think that they would upload the schedule for not only UConn, but but all of women's college basketball. But uh, we'll, we'll just have to wait until that comes out so we, we get the official times and dates of all the games and, and also pick go through each every each each and every UConn game, pick them, uh, give our opinions uh, just quickly about every single game. So, but yeah, that, that lineup episode, I know we've been talking about it through all these player episodes. So that, that'll definitely be a fun one to do. How about Tom Kibbe? We haven't heard from him in a while. Hi guys. Been having trouble with my phone commenting. Okay. Well, there's your answer, Ryan. 
Uh, so I'll be short for a change. Paige's physical is a blessing and maybe a curse. She just doesn't have big legs, lone, uh, but not strong. Her long, slim build is one reason she has all those moves, but maybe not con conducive uh, to getting banged around. And she does not, or uh, excuse me, and she does get banged around. Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree with that. And I, I think a big thing is that, that Paige is going to have to focus on through her recovery process is, is kind of just working out um, every every part of the body, your your legs, arms, uh, chest, back. It's it's very, very important uh, to work out each and every part of the body, especially for, for athletes as well, uh, and especially players with her build, just like Gino said. Uh, she definitely needs to, to get in the gym, work out more, build up her muscle, uh, not only for her seasons left at UConn, but if she wants to progress her career in, into the WNBA or even overseas as well, uh, she's going to have to get bigger and, and stronger as a basketball player. So I think that's going to be really important for her, especially getting hurt twice on the same leg and knee, uh, is to work every part of her body and make sure it's strong enough to uh, not not get injured again. How about the disruptive one? If Caroline gets back to her January form and improves her three point percentage, then it is a wrap. This team will be really good. Yeah, I, I just think if every player on UConn could shoot the three, I, I think it, it'd almost be impossible for teams to guard UConn. But that's why I like Dorcas so much as a post player. She can step outside, shoot the three. AZ Fudd, Caroline Dusharm, we already know how good they are as, as three-point shooters. And Lou Lopez uh, also outside as well. I, I would love to see Aaliyah being able to produce that outside shot and, and learn that during the off season, but we'll have to see if, if she can step out, out outside and shoot that three point shot. Um, but it's definitely going to be exciting the first couple games to see how the UConn players and, and different players on this team to just watch them and see what improvements they've made through these summer workouts during the off season, what UConn's work on. So it's going to be exciting the, the first couple games. Now we're having, this is interesting. We're having subscribers go back and forth at each other on this pod. Uh, <laughs> hot debates. I tell you, Richard uh, Watley to the guy that said Paige was horsing around. Where did you get that? She was working on her game to get ready for the season. When she got hurt, she also had been working extremely hard to gain weight. Hence her gaining 10 pounds. Well, again, Ryan, I, I don't, I, we haven't actually had official word, but a pickup game, uh, it is a pickup game. I, I don't understand. Maybe you can tell me the difference between a pickup game and practice uh, because I, I took it as playing in someone's driveway or, or, or playing in someone's neighborhood. Maybe I'm totally wrong. We, we actually did not get official word of what happened. Yeah. And I mean, if I had to guess in my opinion, the, the way I took it would be uh, a pickup game with her teammates, probably somewhere on the UConn campus or, or okay. maybe in their practice gym. I, I don't think it would have been uh, in someone's driveway. But like you said, there, there's, <laughs> really, there's really no. There is well, no Ryan, Ryan is just putting his guard up saying, hey, it wasn't in my driveway. So please <laughs> no. don't blame me. No, it, 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 you, nothing. Didn't, you didn't invite Paige Beckers no. over, did you? <laughs> no, well, if she wanted to come over and shoot baskets with me, I would have definitely accepted it. But uh, no, I mean, I, I, I would assume that that it was somewhere on campus with her teammates. Uh, but like you said, th there is no official word. And uh, like you said as well, pickup game can be uh, interpreted, you know, many different ways. But uh, I don't think she was horsing around or. Uh, doing anything out of the ordinary where she she was putting her body at risk to get injured uh, or doing anything you know out of the ordinary in terms of shooting the basketball or doing trick shots or anything like that but um, yeah I mean it's just an unfortunate situation that the way it happened especially during the all season just as she was you know like they said just training getting her body right picking up weight going to the gym every single day and it just kind of just got all thrown away just like that when, when we all saw the notification about her getting injured again. How about this one to end the day, Ryan, and then we'll head on out. Um, this is a 
kind of a general sports topic that we've talked about for years, you and I together. Uh, it's it's about it's what comes with talent. It, it's what comes with winning. You know, there's a price for everything. Uh, people think when you continue to lose game after game that the pressure is off of you. Uh, that's not the only case uh, because guess what, Ryan? When you continue to win game after game, there's also pressure on your back. Uh, so it's you kind of can't win for losing, right? Uh, Michael Lawson goes, I heard the comments and this is how I feel. UConn will always have a target on their back because it's UConn. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's really <laughs> it. That's all you have to say. And, and that, well, I mean, that, that comes with the price of winning. I mean, is that, is that basically, is that it? I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's just about sums everything up about UConn. Uh, and, and even before we started covering, we started the podcast about UConn covering UConn. Uh, you know, I was even getting a little annoyed about UConn winning 100 plus games in a row. Uh, and if you're not a true UConn fan, I, I think, you know, everybody started to wanting UConn to lose. And like you said, that comes with the price of winning. Uh, and it, it really just t puts a target on your back for not only the next year, but for every single year to come. And I think, you know, all of women's college basketball, every single team, all the coaches, all the, the you know, the experts know that UConn's always going to be up there in the rankings every single year. They're, they're, they're always expected to win their conference, get into March Madness. And that goes the same as any other sport as well, just like Alabama and football, uh, the Patriots when they had Tom Brady, the, the Bucks now when they have Tom Brady. Uh, so, the, I mean, it goes for different athletes, different teams as well. Just everybody, you know, it's a different situation for every single team, every athlete, you know, different athletes yeah. having targets on their back. So, mm -hmm. yeah, well, I will, I will uh, remind you of this to stay positive, everyone, not just you, Ryan, stay positive. And how about let's look uh, into the future. Well, we can't forget about this season, obviously, but uh Let's just stay positive and say, hey, you know what? Paige Beckers is coming back fully healthy, and she will be uh, the MVP one of these days, right? And let's even predict what WNBA jersey she would be wearing one of these days. I know people don't like to look too far into the future, but, hey, I know they want to see a national championship in this city uh, <laughs> before Paige Beckers leaves. Uh, that's the goal. Ryan, a little drum roll for this one. We finally reached it, partner. Round one of the WNBA playoffs begin tonight. Yeah, Aces, Sky, uh, Liberty, you know, it's it's so exciting. And uh, tomorrow night as well, my wings, your Mystics start their playoff series as well. So it's definitely really, really exciting. And when I get back from vacation, we'll definitely have to do a couple episodes recapping all these games from the WNBA playoffs. But can't wait to watch Sabrina Ionescu, the Aces, Candace Parker on the sky as well. Really, really excited for these playoffs. Uh, and it's the Storm and Mystic series, I think. I think that's going to be a great series. Sue Bird's last ride. Uh, Brianna Stewart winning AP Player of the Year. And, of course, Elena Deladon uh, in Washington. And the Mystics have a lot of momentum. So it should be really, really fun to watch. Yeah, it all kicks off tonight at 8 o'clock. Liberty in the sky. The sky trying to defend their championship, Ryan. And then you have the Mercury and the Aces. And then, of course, tomorrow night, Ryan, Wings and Sun, Mystics and Storm. Eight teams remain, Ryan, in the WNBA. One team trying to sit on top of the world. It's Phil and Rye on Listen Up.